Burgage was set up as a stud farm in 1946 uh, by Terence Vigers, who had been uh, just decommissioned from the RAF after the end of the war, and he had an interest in breeding, and the stud was converted from a working farm. And the most famous horse that they had was Sovereign Path, uh, who won the Queen Elizabeth II stakes as a racehorse. He came here in 1961, and he was a great success. He was the champion European Bay Sire in 1970 when his filly Humble Duty won the Guineas. He died in 77 and that's when we uh, fortunately bought Burbage. And uh, I moved back here in 1985 and it was a boarding farm. We had some broodmares and then in 2001 in association with Barry Lynch, Bob Back came here and he was a wonderful horse to have. He was a proven star at that point and he was a tremendous success for so many people. Uh, Chantou came here in 2004. He had been a stud in Italy. He won the St. Ledger for John Gosden. He was John Gosden's first classic winner in 1986 in Doncaster. Chantou isn't a big horse. Uh, he's 15-3, he's built like a sprinter, so it took some time for some of the jumping people to uh, warm to him from a physical point of view. But the results kept coming. Uh, De Valere was a very good novice horse for Michael O'Brien and it just went on from there. And Chantou has been a tremendous star for us. Uh, he's been our Galileo. Um, he has, every year he's become more and more commercial and the good winners keep coming. Chantou is 27 now so we won't be covering any more with him. He's been retired and he'll stay here as long as he's healthy and well. But then 2017, Jukebox Jury, um, we had some contacts in Germany who were watching the racing there and we kept hearing, we knew that the horse was there, we knew he was a classic winner by Manju, so that was a good start, but we noticed in the pattern races that he was either getting placed or running well, his progeny, and as I say, our contacts kept telling us that trainers liked the stock and they seemed to be getting better from two to three, they were improving with age and then the horse became available for sale. And again, fortunately, we had a partnership ready that could move, and he was bought. He came here in December 2017, and Farclass won the Triumph Hurdle three months later. So it was a perfect beginning. It was, it was exactly what you would wish for in promoting a stallion. And since he's been here, he's had three grade or group one winners. So we can't uh, ask for too much more than that. And he's been popular, he's covered between 150-60 mares each season, so he's good representation on the ground. This fellow is a lovely, lovely horse to deal with. Um, he raced for four years with Mark Johnson. And Mark Johnson, when you speak to Mark Johnson about the horse, you can clearly see he loved the, he loved the idea of having him because he was dependable. He raced for four seasons, he won a group race in each of those seasons. He's, he maintained his consistency right to the end. He dead heated in the Irish St. Ledger. He won another Group 1 race. He was placed in two other Group 1 races. And he raced in seven different countries. And if you think about, apart from the physical soundness, the mental soundness of a horse to take that kind of travel and that type of uh, variance in where he was sent, uh, that probably speaks, that probably says it all. And it's important as well that if he has a good temperament, that he passes that on to his stock because you don't want horses that have talent but just mentally can't take the pressure. So, so far, he's done all the right things. Getting a stallion to replace a successful stallion is always a challenge, and there's a lot of luck involved, a lot of timing, being in the right place, meeting the right person, and having successful stallions makes you look good, but in fact, there's a lot of good fortune attached to the whole thing. Uh, we have good clients, they have good mares, we are supported, we have nice mares ourselves, but the stallions have made those nice mares. If you keep putting mares to good stallions, a potent stallion can bring an awful lot to that situation. And Bob Back mares and Shantou mares in time, hopefully, will, will add to what we have. We've been terribly fortunate. We've had good stallions here, and good stallions make studs, bad stallions ruin studs, and I'm very conscious of that. But I'm also very conscious that you're one step away from something that happens in a, in a negative way. So you take every day as it comes, you enjoy what you've done, and you try and lay down the roots for the future. And our two boys are involved in the business, and hopefully they in turn, um, whenever that happens, will continue. And Everything in this business does evolve, but one thing hasn't changed. It's the best horse, ridden by the best jockey, trained by the best trainer, that wins the race.
when Gorn Park started in 1914, it was the very same thing. 100 years later, nothing has changed. How we do it has changed, but the actual, what's required, and it's the same with breeding a horse. It's the best horse, it's the best sire, and the winning post is what's important. It's the only thing that's important. It's the hype, the propaganda, the promotion is fine, it's part of the business, but the results is what matters. And that's what I tend to uh, adhere to.